Page 25, the Pelican. With this piece, they're introducing you to the key of A flat major. A flat major has four flats. I can explain A flat major to you, and maybe I will a little bit, but I think the better way to learn a key is to learn the scale. So I encourage you to go do my scale video on A flat major. If you're not at all familiar with it, do the beginner level. That's one octave up and down. You learn the fingerings, you learn which notes are involved. I explain it all in the scale. Uh, if you are familiar with the scale already, then do the intermediate level, the two octaves up and down. A mistake a lot of people will make is they get a little, they overestimate them, or they're in a hurry to learn. Don't get me riled here. And they'll say, I'll just do the advanced part. And that is a good way to just fail. Please don't do that. Take this just one step at a time. There's no hurry as far as I'm concerned. You might be in a hurry, but don't, please. Take your time. And there I explain which notes are flat and, and all that stuff. Because there's four flats, that means there's four notes that are flatted. You're going to use four black keys somewhere. And so learn that in the scale video. I'd prefer you go there to learn this key signature than me trying to explain it here. Right hand position. They give you the right hand positions up above. Yuck. Let's look at the piece right at the beginning. First measure. Second fingers on the E flat. Then F, G, and A flat. It's not the most comfortable position, not the most convenient position, but it works for this piece, and that's really what it's about. You're in this position for this piece. If you had a D flat, it would be here, and then you'd be here. And look at that mess. <laughs> and if your hands are too thick, your fingers are too thick to fit in between the notes comfortably, then putting a thumb on that D flat becomes a problem. Then we have to adjust things slightly. But we don't have to worry about that in the right hand, because we're not. So you can stay out here. So we should be okay. In the left hand, you're starting 4-2, should be okay. And then in the second line, you're going to 3-1 here. Hopefully, you can still be able to do that even if you have fat fingers, because there's no black key in between these two. So you got a little more room than you would have if there were a black key there. So you can go from here to here, hopefully. Now if you can stay up there, that's fine. Otherwise you've got to come down here and then up. And then down. Do the best you can with it. I know the tendency is you're going to want to do here and here. And you have to be able to do that. But for this piece, I would still recommend 4-2 and 3-1 if you can. Try and get the notes down at the same time. I'm terrible at that, but you try. Get them down. Put your hand in that position and drop the hand. And then in the next one, put your hand in that position, more or less, and drop the hand. Put it there and then you lift the other fingers out of the way is really what you're doing. And that takes some practice to get them down at the same time. <coughs> These little details make all the difference in the world. So yeah, work on it. Hopefully you're better at it than I am. And that's the hand position for this piece. Now, time signature is six eight times, so we gotta count to six, yuck. And we're counting eighth notes. So at the beginning, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at the second line. One, two, three. You got an F sharp in there. See, it's not the same. One, two, three, four. Five, six, and then we go back down. And that's really all the piece is, is these two things, these two positions. What I like to do is I like to play it slowly with you. It says it's moderato, and they give a metronome marking for eighth notes. Kind of up to you. How, If you're going to sing it, how fast would you sing it? How fast do you feel moderato is? Because it's not going to be the same for everybody. So I can't say this is moderato. And I know a lot of books and metronomes might give this sort of range for moderato. 
But I think you'll even find there's a difference of opinion on that. So it's up to, where do you think it is? We want to feel six beats. They only give you a dynamic of MF. You don't have to stay at MF throughout. You can get louder and softer. How do you feel it? And music has to flow. So you come go, go up to here, then go down to here. Make it feel like it's flowing someplace. You're not just playing individual notes. Ugh. Melodies in the right hand. Keep the right hand louder than the left. So whatever it is, that's what it is. We're going to play it really, really, really slowly. So I'm going to give it six counts since it's six feet in a measure. And let's try this out slowly. Here and here. One, two, three, four. Ready, go. On page 24, there is a quiz. Sean likes quizzes. So let's go over this. So these are, I believe, true and false. And if you have a teacher and so forth, and you're going to take this quiz, then skip this part of the video, because I'm about to give you all the answers. And that's cheating. You don't want to do that. Huh? Mm -hmm. Number one. Many movies and TV programs use classical theme songs, true or false? The answer is true. They certainly do. Not going to go through them, but they do. They really do. Or bits and pieces of them. Okay, fine. You want an example? Number two is an example. The William Tell Overture. That is the uh, Lone Ranger theme from the TV movie Lone Ranger. Although the Overture was written way back in the 1800s, long before him. Number two. Beethoven wrote the William Tell Overture. That is false. I don't remember right offhand who wrote it, but I know it wasn't Beethoven. Number three, Schubert is one of America's great songwriters, and that is false. Schubert wrote a lot of songs called Leader, and he was really good at it. And very, they're very popular songs if you're into classical songs. But Schubert was not American, so forget it. No. Number three, you should never look at the dictionary on page 48. That's probably a false because the dictionaries are there to look at. Uh, of course, with today's smartphones and all that, you've got all kinds of dictionaries available to you. And I recommend you use more than one dictionary. I really do. Many times they'll give slightly different definitions. Number five, the abbreviation A period M period means before noon. And that is correct. It is. The book explains this earlier on. You can go back and look it up. Number six, the abbreviation P period, M period, means afternoon, PM. That, that is true also. Number seven, Mazurka is the name of a Polish composer. And that is false. It's not a composer, it's a dance, a Polish dance. Number eight, the harmonious blacksmith is by Bach. And you can go back and look it up. No, it's not by Bach, it's by Handel. Number nine, the three B's are Bach, Beethoven, and Bizet. And that is false. It's Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms. Number ten, three notes with a slur in italic. Well, the symbol they're showing is like three eighth notes barred together or beamed together. And there's a little curved line and there's a three. 
There's an example of it shown on page 14. And they are, yes, it's a triplet. It's true. Number 11, legato and staccato are contrasting touches. Okay, I'll buy that. If you want to call it a touch, yes. Legato is connected and staccato is separated. So I guess that's different. Yeah. Number 12, following the expression marks will make your playing more musical. And that I believe is true. The expressions are there for a reason. They add something to the music. So yeah, it'll be more musical. In a way, number 12 is false because the expression marks alone don't make it sound musical. They sound more musical than it would be if you didn't put them in, but you still have to feel it to really turn it into music. So I think they're after a true there, but I think there's more than expression marks to make a sound musical. Number 13, the first ledger line above the bass clef is the same note as the first ledger line below the treble clef. And you have to figure out, okay, what's all this going on? And the short answer to that is true. Yes, it's middle C. That's where middle C is. It's, oh. it's in the middle between the two clef signs, bass clef and treble clef. It's in right it's between those. It's not the middle of the keyboard. It's the middle of the uh, clefs. Number 14, a dogie is a little dog. Actually, it's a calf. It's a little cow, not a dog. I don't know why they put that in there. It has nothing to do with music. I mean, you've got songs about it. You've got songs about everything. But, uh, okay, fine. 15, Chopin and Paderewski are two great Russian composers. And that is false. They're Polish composers, not Russian. This is called a grace note. And what it, they're showing you an eighth note with a slice through the stem. And that's true. It is called a grace note. Number 17. Grace notes are struck together in slow melodic pieces. And that's false. If it's a slow melodic piece, you're not going to stick them together. You're going to play them one after the other. The grace note's a very quick little note right before the main note. Number 18, grace notes are struck separately in live rhythmic pieces. Well, they could be, but in many cases you end up striking them at the same time and then releasing the grace note and hanging down or hanging on to the main note. Number 19, the second ledger line above the bass clef is an E. And you have to think, uh, bass clef, ledger line, blah, 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 and the answer is true. It is an E. Number 20, last one. The second ledger line below the treble clef is a C, and that is false. The first ledger line is a C. The second ledger line going down below the treble clef is an A. So that's that. And that's quiz number one.